I became a Remainer now. Um, it was at a time when no one seriously predicted Trump would become the President of the United States of America. We lived in a world that was yet to become radically unstable. But six months before the referendum, I lost my mum to Alzheimer's disease and I was under a huge amount of stress at work and I simply didn't have the time, to be honest, or the inclination to delve into the politics or the deception that we now know is behind Brexit. <laughs> On the 23rd of June 2016, I voted leave on the stupid assumption that we were correct in predicting a safe Remain victory. But why did I vote leave? Well, here's an extract from the email I sent to my MP, the wonderful Caroline Lucas. <laughs> and um, I sent this on the 27th of June after feeling quite sick looking at Farage's face, gloating. Anyway, it says, Dear Caroline, I'm afraid I was an undecided voter until the last day. The looming EU Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership Agreement <laughs> swung me over to Brexit. It's something Unison had been warning us about since last year. I thought by voting out, it would help to give the EU a bloody nose. How stupid was I anyway? Not in my worst nightmare did I believe Brexit would triumph. The referendum process is so far from what we normally experience. So, please, Caroline, could you try to overturn Brexit? <laughs> as, much, <laughs> as, as much as I'd like to be free of some EU tyranny, I had no idea what I was talking about, the cost is far too much to bear. I hope with all my heart you'll be able to help the British population who didn't want this. It really was too close a call. So that was back in June 2016. Now we face a no deal Brexit, which will damage our country far more than the TTIP. It means we will become, or already have become, Trump's poodle and Putin's puppet. Please accept my apology. But as a Remainer now, I promise to do all I can to overturn Brexit and my original vote. Can we just say one thing? 17.4 is no more. Don't count me out. The EU can count me in. Thank you. Hello, hello. So, uh, guys, the first thing I want to do, right, is I actually want to apologise to every citizen of the United Kingdom because I voted leave, but I think I should have known better actually. Um, so, I'm just going to go through some of the reasons why I voted leave and why I think those reasons are not valid anymore. So the first reason why I voted leave is simply because I didn't like David Cameron. I didn't like his austerity programme and I just thought, you know, he's telling us to remain, so I'll just do the opposite for what he, he, he's telling us. Um, the second reason why I voted to um, leave is because I didn't think Leave was going to win. If I thought Leave was going to win and Nigel Farage was going to end up smiling air to air, I definitely would have voted for Remain because he does not represent me at all. I also thought that if I voted Leave, we are a reasonable country. I thought we are a reasonable country, you know. Um, during the referendum, a lot of people said that um, we would be crazy to leave the single market. Yeah. A lot of the messaging that was put out, was put out was very confusing. I didn't um, vote um, leave as a staunch sort of lever. I looked at the evidence at the time, what I thought was the right thing for the country, and I thought, you know what, let's vote leave. But now, since then, I've done a lot more reading, I understand a lot more things, so now I think, you know what, there's no way I should have voted leave, I should have known better, and now I would definitely classify myself as a staunch Remainer. You must stay in the EU. And at a minimum, I thought, if we leave the EU, worst comes to worst, at least there'll be some more money for the NHS. But that's obviously a complete joke. Um, in 2017, I got a phone call um, on a Friday. I'm an IT contractor, 
and I got a contract in Holland. So I got a call on a Friday and I was sitting at my desk on a Monday and I think that's actually when the penny dropped. I thought, I am a migrant worker. The only thing that I can say that has been positive about this experience is I hope the UK as a nation and in our public consciousness, we have much more information and understand how the EU works. Um, and basically, I want to stay in the EU. We must have a people's vote and we must stay in the EU. I have faith in this country, in this nation. I, my family came over here from Nigeria. We were welcomed as immigrants. My father built a business, he employed people. And you know, all the immigration that we have to this country makes this country richer. It makes this country better. Freedom, freedom of movement provides opportunities for our, our children to go and learn, to go and work, and to go and love all over Europe and it's something that I think I took for granted but I will not take for granted anymore. The last point I wanted to make was this. In 2017, my young daughter developed epilepsy. I'd already changed my mind by then, so I actually asked my consultant, what is actually happening with her drugs? He told me that they were being stockpiled, but he also told me, look, he doesn't know, he cannot be sure, you know, it is possible that they could run out of medicine. Now, I did not vote for my daughter to be okay, should be okay, you know, I did not vote for that. I think we must have a people's vote. That brings the whole country together, it is the only way. And you know what, can I just make one last point before I go, because I've gone over my time. Boris Johnson, what a joke. The other day, he got a kipper and he waved it around the world. He, he waved it around the room and basically gave in fact, in, incorrect factual statement about um, you know about this about this kipper. So come on, Boris, you've done me like a kipper, but not this time. <laughs> I love it.